Welcome back. This is the India Global Forum Studio Sessions. And our topic now is Global Capabilities, the New Frontier for India. I have a very special guest for you here, Vandana Saxena Puriya, OBE. Just going to add that on to on. Thank you. Advisor India, and that is for the um, ICAEW, which stands for the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales. Yes. And Chief Alarmist, which sounds rather alarming, the Human Alarm Clock and company. Yes. Tell me, just describe those two roles, first of all. Oh, it's so interesting. So the Institute of Chartered Accountants England and Wales is obviously in, um, the UK's premier accountancy um, organisation, professional skills. And um, I've lived in India for 18 years now, and I work very closely on behalf of the Institute with the Indian Institute of Chartered Accountants. And um, it's all about building the bridge, helping them ensure that they've got the global skills to be the next frontier for the world, mm. to be the world's accountants. Whereas your alarmist side yeah. or the alarm clock is a slightly different it's slightly role. slightly different, but it's, it's um, kind of similar in that it's trying to get people um, to understand what makes other people tick and how can you get to something much more quickly? How can you accelerate growth by getting people on the same page quicker? All right, really interesting, two different sides of, of your life. Yes. But let's talk about, um, you're speaking on a personal capacity today, let's yes. make that clear. Now, I don't know, 20 years ago, we called it outsourcing, but it's got a fancier name, and it means something slightly different now, and you talk about global capability centers. Yeah. Talk us through what those are and what that means for India now. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. So I use an analogy it kind of break, breaks down towards the end, but I use the analogy of, um, if you look at how outsourcing started, it was very much a UK um, multinational, like a Unilever would say, oh, it's much cheaper to have mm. people in India, let's get them doing some work. And they were like the strict parent saying, this is what India, this is what you're gonna do. You're not gonna go left or right, you are just gonna do this. Mm. And then it's like India said, I can do that. Look, I'm doing it really well. And like an Indian parent, um, <laughs> the, the Unilever would go, OK, well, we'll give you a little bit more and we'll give you a little bit more. And now that basket has grown. So it's no longer called outsourcing because it's, it's much more about supporting the entire work of a multinational. And that's why it's moved to this idea of being a global capability centre. So now... Interestingly, India, India and Indians are coming back to those multinationals and saying, hey, we, we can do this view, but we can also do this, this and this, and we're really good at doing this. Like what? Give those this, this um, and this. Well, I mean, we've seen tech. Mm -hmm. We've seen tech come out. We've seen the accountancy side. It's not just about recording transactions anymore. It's about making decisions based on that information. So before... All the transactions would be, say, recorded in India, but the decision-making would still happen in the UK. But it's now, no offence to the UK, but it's now like um, the, the UK is like a grandparent and <laughs> India is like this young 20-something-year-old saying, this is how you need to look teaching after Teaching it how money. to use, teaching the grandparent how to use the phone. Absolutely. Example. That's exactly... I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think this analogy is breaking down at all, Vandana. I think it's working really well. It works really well until you get to the point where... Um, Indians in India, many of them who are working at these global capability centres, have never been abroad. Mm. They've never, um, they've never travelled, so they don't know what the front end of business looks like in the UK or the US. And why they, is that important? Um, be, because because things work differently. You know, um, the culture is different. The way people do business is different. And if you can understand that more then whatever you do back on the back end is, is going to be better and quicker and faster and more effective. So and what are those things that are, are different? Be, let's be specific. Um, so, so, for example, the way we would make a decision to buy something in the UK, um, we would probably go onto Amazon, we would check the ratings, which is, of course, what we would do in India. We would talk to friends... Um, there are various organisations in the UK that we'd, pro we'd probably look to to get that kind of advice, and then we'd make a buying decision. In India, you would talk to your dad, right. and that's it, and your dad <laughs> would decide for you 
that's what you're going to buy. <laughs> or, or you would talk to your best friend. You wouldn't really trust that many reviews mm. on the internet, but it'd be very family oriented. That's very, very different. Mm. Um, and that comes from the fact that India is, and this is no offense to India, but it is a, a patriarchal hierarchy where you know, your families are very involved with what you do, what decisions you make, et cetera, et cetera, which is not the case. You hit 18 in the UK and your parents are kind of checking you out. Mm. It's very, very different. And what about the kind of skills that you build in a workplace? So mm. we talk a lot about collaboration in the workplace uh, in the UK yes. and other Western um, countries. Yeah. How does that play in India? Yeah, and that, that's, um, that's a real challenge because, because of what I said before, because of the patriarchal hierarchy, um, where you, you're pretty much growing up in a world where your family will often dictate everything from... Um, and, and obviously, India is many layers. I'm talking about a big layer of mm. India. They will dictate, you know, everything from which school you'll go to, which degree you'll do, uh, who you'll marry. You know, that's still, that's still a big thing. And then our young people are expected to go into the workplace. And we're suddenly told, you know, you've got to make decisions for yourself. You've got to collaborate with all these people. We haven't been taught how to do that mm. in India as much as we're taught in the UK. Also, India is hyper-competitive. You know, to get into a, an Oxford, it might be one in, I don't know, 5,000 or 7,000. To get into one of the top universities in India, it's probably mm. one in 25 to 30,000. So competition is much more. So you're taught to just be the best you can on your own and not share with others mm. as much. So in the workplace, when, when Indians go into the work, workplace, that is one of the challenges. So how do you address that challenge? Well, I think um, institutes like the Institute of Chartered Accountants England and Wales um, and other organisations are spending a lot of money on integrating the softer skills into everything um, they do. And, and I've seen very much, you know, all the banks that have got offices in India, global capability centres, that's what they're doing. They're spending a lot of money. But the challenge is that these are things that you've grown up with so it's not like a switch that you can mm -hmm. just turn on. I went to a course on negotiations. I know how to do it. You have to practice, practice, practice. So, so um, mentorship, mentorship, I imagine. My mentorship and shadowing. Does that shadowing. come naturally or is that... Is it, is uh, it's it? actually really good. In mm. India now, there, there is a huge mentoring culture. Um, and also there's a lot of work shadowing. There are these opportunities of secondments abroad, et cetera, et cetera. Interesting. One of the issues that came up the other day on Monday in our debate on which worries you more, climate change or AI, was this idea of, of ethics. And we know that as you know, the AI is only as good as those who originally program it. Yes. And with that comes an understanding of ethics. I believe there's a, a multi-million pound investment in the University of Cambridge to build ethics alongside their um, computer programming program. Uh, and it's a, an enormous interest and quite rightly concern because we see so much incredible programming talent come out of India. Mm. I wonder if there's a similar understanding and um, focus on incorporating the ethics side along with the AI? So I think there's um, a will to bring in ethics, not just into AI, but into accountancy, into business, into DEI. Mm. And we've got the DEI Institute and people like Aftab Malhotra really involved with India Global Forum. The, the challenge in India is when you have a country of, you know, over a billion people, um, you, you tend to try and regulate through compliance. And so people are taught to understand rules. And rules are either right or wrong, yes or no. Um, the challenge with ethics is you have to teach that there's this grey area in between. And again, to get people to understand this takes a lot of time. Uh, people are used to having somebody tell them, yes, this is right, or no, this isn't. But ethics is that, that boundary mm. of, of uh, or sorry, that wide space in shades between. Shades of grey. And it's the shades of grey. So teaching people to understand those shades of grey is a really, really important part, which is, which is more done um, 
within the workplace than it is during the schooling system. It's part of the schooling system here, but it's not so much part of the schooling system in India. So it is a concern. And I imagine, I, I imagine the work of an accountant starts off as being quite black and white, quite oriented towards Excel spreadsheets, for example, but it sounds like something that accountants also have to, to take on. Oh, absolutely, no, you know, at every level, you know, should this transaction be considered an asset or should it be considered an expense? It's a big issue. Mm. So there is an ethical dilemma right from day one in accountancy in the way we teach it as ICAW. The way we would teach it as ICAI is much more around regulation and compliance. And it's really important to remember that one in six going into the global workforce is an Indian now. Now, which means either an Indian's going to be working for you or you're going to be working for an Indian. Or an Indian's going to be selling to you or you're going to be selling to an Indian. So whichever way you look at it, you are going to be working with Indians. And it's really important that ethics isn't just something for the UK, something mm. for um, India, but it's something that we're globally aware of and we're moving in that direction. And Dana, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely fascinating, proving that uh, accountants are not bean counters. They are incredibly Absolutely. interesting uh, folks. So thank you very much for joining us here thank in you. the IGF studio.